A man in his 20s died and went to hell and experienced some pretty shocking moments there. In this video, we're going to hear from him and talk about what he experienced. Welcome back to the prayer link for Josh Miles. Coming down with the flu turned into a life-changing experience. He was sick with a 106 degree fever and his friends and family say he just wasn't acting like himself. That's right. His dad was so concerned that he took him to the ER and on his way there, Josh's soul left his body and he says he went straight to hell. Josh Miles joins us now. Okay, first of all, Josh, you say that hell is nothing like it's depicted in the movies. How so? Uh, you know, in a lot of the movies, it's a lot of like fire and things like that. And I think people, you know, and the Bible says the world shall be cast into the lake of fire, but hell is not actual fire. Uh, it's just it's like molting rock. It's almost like the center of the earth. Josh, how would you describe the torment that you felt there? You said it was extremely hot, but but that you didn't get burned. And you said it was sort of like losing your mind. Yes, I think people misconstrued the statement of supernatural. I think they think that's only a heavenly or a God. I mean, everything in that world, in the spiritual world, is supernatural. Um, it's just you have good and evil. So even in hell, it's supernatural will think that supernatural only exists in heaven, but it also exists in hell. So because it's so hot, and we're talking like thousands of degrees hot, and there's so much torment, your body is not burned. It's, your skin is not burned. It's not getting eaten by heat or anything like that. It's just you feel so much heat and so much torment, but yet your body itself is not experiencing any effect of that. And I think that's a very, very difficult thing, especially for the torment you have because you're feeling so much pain and regret and paranoia and all of these different emotions at one time. I tell people, you know, you imagine your worst day you could ever have. And it's, it's multiplied tenfold, thousandfold uh, when you're in hell. It's a place that I, I really, you should be scared of it. I tell people, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I state what's true, you know. And hell. Let's pause there real fast. We're going to come back to it. But it's super interesting to think about. He's talking, he's saying that hell is a spiritual experience. It's physical and yet it's also spiritual. And it makes you ask the question, what is hell then? Half physical, half spiritual? Is it a different dimension? One thing I've heard people say that have had near-death experiences is when you leave your body, your senses get totally enhanced. You see colors you've never seen before. You feel things you've never felt before. And it sounds like what Josh experienced is something extremely similar. Similar. He's leaving his body, right? It doesn't sound like his body was teleported to this place called hell, but actually his consciousness, his spirit, his soul, something that's immaterial went to this place and yet was still experiencing senses. Okay, let's play it again. It's definitely a place that's a scary, scary thing. Wow. And, and Josh, it's amazing that you say you, you still had all five of your senses Tell us a little bit about what you saw and what you smelled. Mm. The smell was very terrible, uh, especially because you're housing millions of people and demons and things like that. And it's very hot. Uh, so the smell was terrible. And also, you know, hell is the opposite of heaven in every single way. So is the devil. So, you know, hell smelled terrible from the fact that it's a pungent odor that is it's I can't even really describe how bad it smells. And then you combine that with the heat. That is, I mean, you know, if you go into your car and it's 100 degrees in the day, you open the door, sometimes if you sit in it, it can be a little difficult to breathe. But that's only 100, 120 degrees. Can you, if you, you know, you're talking about thousands of degrees. That makes it extremely hard to breathe on that fact alone uh, because hell is literally meant for torture. Wow. You know, people think that God sent people to hell. We choose our own. God gave us a will for a reason. We choose our own path of life. And if you choose him, that's where you end up. If you choose another way than the hell is where you end up. It's not like God is like, hey, people go to hell. He, he wants us to go to heaven. He wants us to live in him. He wants us to be his bride. But we have to choose him. Josh, mm -hmm. uh, we're... Hell is the opposite of heaven in every way. It sounds like every single sense, based on his testimony, is the complete opposite of what you would want or desire. So instead of a good fragrance, it's a horrible, pungent, disgusting odor. Instead of feeling cool and relaxed and calm you're feeling the intense heat and pressure of hell you're packed in somewhere with millions of people instead of joy and hope you're feeling regret 
and sorrow. It's amazing that he experienced this place. It's also amazing that he's saying hell is not like what people have taught, because you would think if this was some sort of imagination, then he would picture hell the way he's been taught. But it sounds like he's experiencing something brand new, which in my opinion gives validity to his testimony. You said other people were there. There were lots of people there. Um, did you see their faces? Did you see demons? I did. You can, you can definitely see faces. You know, people ask me if I saw anybody I recognized. I didn't. Uh, but there's millions of people in hell. Like, it is millions upon millions. And everybody's standing on, like, shelves of rock, like molten rock. And everybody's screaming now and in turmoil. And it's, it's crazy because you are in pain and turmoil yourself. This is true. But to see other people go through that kind of turmoil hurts even more. You know, and you can remember the things that you did on this earth, secrets and things like that. And you actually have a hunger and a thirst for God himself because you know you didn't make it and you're just begging him to come get you, but you already know it's too late. And that makes it even more painful when you have a love for God. And sometimes we take advantage of that here and then you end up in hell. You don't have a choice anymore because you're there. Mm. Wow. Now it's interesting to me that the people that are there have a desire for God and that the fact you're seeing other people experiencing pain and sorrow and hardship actually affects you as well. Because you think like in this world when there are people that are just evil, they're just selfish, that are on the way to hell, like they don't really care too much about other people. But it almost sounds like once they shed this body and they're just spirit, and soul and they're in this place of hell they actually regain a level of conscience a level of right and wrong they feel remorse and regret it's as if now they are released from this hard shell and that's really intense to think about that people millions he's saying are in hell right now because of their sin because of their wickedness, because of their selfishness. And now they're feeling regret. Now they're feeling remorse. Now they're feeling the wickedness of their own heart. You know, I've preached to many hundreds of thousands of people in the United States. And I've heard this over and over from people saying that we're gonna party in hell. We're gonna have a wonderful time in hell. Yeah, yeah, the devil rules, all this nonsense. And they're saying this in the midst of my preaching and they have no idea that the people in hell are not laughing they are not having a party with satan they are burning like this man is saying they are feeling the regrets and the remorse of a life that was lived opposed to god i want to encourage you now with this testimony that this young guy in his 20s experienced hell and got to come back to tell us about it. What does this do to you and to your life? Because as he said, God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. The Bible says he doesn't want anyone to perish. My friends, I encourage you, whoever you are watching this right now, really take time when this is over, when this video is over, and examine yourself and ask yourself and even ask God, Lord, am I ready to be with you? If I were to die today, would I be able to be with you or would I go to hell? Because he doesn't want you to die. Jesus shed his blood for you on that cross to wash you from your sin so that you could be ready to enter into his eternal gates. Heaven is a pure and perfect place. There is no sin in heaven. You got to be washed clean from that sin. And the Bible has a parable of a man throwing a great banquet and all these people are coming. But one man was in that banquet that was not wearing the wedding garment and he was removed from that celebration he was removed from that palace he was thrown into outer darkness even though there was an opportunity to wear the garment i encourage you all today now is the day of salvation now is the day to turn to jesus he loves you he wants to forgive you he wants to bring you into eternity may god bless you